Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I had a subscriber ask a question, which again is going to be very personal in nature, which I'll flip in here for you guys. Um, this person has someone who suffers from Meniere's disease. Uh, they found out through watching my videos, they've been a follower of mine for a while, that they found out that I have it also, and they're asking for advice on how to cope with it, because I seem to be doing okay. They see me doing heavy deadlifting and everything else. Uh, so let me talk with you guys about that for a minute. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little crafting, and let's talk about it. Um, the reason I'm choosing to answer this one, I know people are like, well, there aren't that many people who have this either. So thousands of them, but it's not millions and millions of people. But you know what? Uh, the fact of the matter is, this is fitness related. It is a little bit about my personal life, which people sometimes <laughs> like to hear for some reason. And, uh, you know, I, and I feel like talking about it because this might actually help someone. This might actually help people. And it means a lot to me because this is a disease that absolutely devastated my life at one time. And I know there's been a lot of scuttlebutt on the internet and people have even tried to create videos explaining how they're convinced I don't have it or whatever doctors they, people claim to be doctors try to post. Look, your internet diagnosis is mean absolutely nothing. Um, I've had three different specialists, three different specialists, one ENT, I'm sorry, two ENTs, one of them who was the head uh, of the ENT department at Ben Taub Hospital and a neurologist, all three of them gave me separate independent diagnoses for having bilateral Meniere's disease, having it in both ears. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to take the word of three different medical specialists over any jackass or fucktard on the internet. You guys know nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, my medical records are pretty clear on this one. I have been debilitated by it in the past. I spent 10 months pretty much in bed as a result of it. Uh, I had to take years away from training. And contrary to, again, the rumors out there, I do not receive any medical disability for it currently. I do not receive any uh, government money at all. Like, as of right, as at this moment, I do not receive a single penny of any type for disability, welfare, benefits, nothing like that from any government in the world. None. Zero. And I pay full taxes on everything that I make. So let's get that, that clear. I'm not faking some disease to get welfare. My medical diagnosis is very, very clear, and I don't receive any welfare from it. No disability currently, nothing. So, with that out of the way, uh, let me talk a little bit about this medical condition. Uh, this medical condition is not well understood. It's something I spent hundreds of hours researching, just like you guys see how much I research everything else. Um, I spent a lot of time researching this. And I mean reading every medical journal I could find, speaking to every doctor I could talk to, going and reading forums for hours and hours of other people who suffer from it. And the things that I realized, there are different triggers for this disease for different people as far as uh, vertigo attacks and your drop attacks that drop you to the floor vomiting and with the room spinning like you're drunk. They're random. There is no cause. When you think you found a cause for it, it's just a correlation you've made up in your head. Oh, maybe a certain sound place and that fucks me all up, or whatever. Um, for me, I would say the biggest triggers are stress and not getting enough sleep. That was one of the things I noticed. Uh, or a rapid change in ear pressure. Like if I'm riding in a car and somebody cracks a window, I am totally fucked. Um, <laughs> I tell my friends and family that just straight up. If you crack a window on me when I'm riding in a car going fast, it's gonna be so painful for me, I'm probably just gonna draw my gun and shoot you. Let's just get that clear right now. Um, <laughs> I, and I make that clear because, yeah, if someone's causing you intense physical pain I think, with an action of theirs, I think shooting them might be pretty reasonable. That might stand in court. But that being said, the joking aside there, but not really, um, it's, it's tough to work around what your triggers are. As far as treatments go, you know, there's three different factors going on. Uh, really only two, though. There's two because there's the autoimmune component of it, but that's really stress and cortisol related. Uh, but there is the cortisol issue because it, it has an autoimmune component that we've learned. Uh, it attacks the inner ear. Uh, your immune system does. And cortisol seems to play a massive role in that. That was something I noted with mine. Uh, when my disease exacerbated, my cortisol levels went through the roof. Um, the other issue is going to be fluid retention inside the affected ear or ears. Because most people who develop disease eventually do develop it in both ears. For me, it took about 15 years for it to go to my other ear. Uh, after just having it in one, I functioned just fine with one, one ear. Uh, when it went to both, it became seriously debilitating. So it's about fluid retention in your ears. Um, you know, and a lot of people argue about the fluid. I personally found 
that the low sodium diet and diuretics did absolutely nothing for me. Nothing for me. Um, some people it works wonders because it helps control the fluids in their ears, the fluid build up and that affects pressure and that can cause vertigo attacks, causing you to fall on the ground, vomiting, throwing up for 30 minutes straight with the room spinning, being everyone thinking you're completely drunk. Um, you know, and when you have it bad, you're gonna get a couple of those every single day. Uh, it can be very awkward, very embarrassing, uh, pretty difficult to have a life. But uh, for me, I noticed that the diets didn't help uh, at all. But one of the things that I did find, a lot of people find antihistamines help with drying up the ears, Benadryl. I take Benadryl before bed every night. The other thing that I do most nights, not every night, uh, depends on my mood. Some days I just don't want a glass of wine. But a glass of wine or a single shot of whiskey before bed. Not getting drunk, because getting drunk can exacerbate your meneers tremendously sometimes. If you have something that replicates some of the negative effects of intoxication, you mix too much alcohol with that, it's double dose. You get a drop attack when you're drinking, it is going to give you double the negative effects. It's going to double up so bad, you're going to be puking your guts up for two hours straight. Um, so again, the issue there is that it can dehydrate the ears and the sinus cavity just a little bit. All right, that's very, very helpful. That's what I found. Um, the other stuff has to do with stress management and cortisol management. What does that mean? Um, keeping yourself in a low stress environment. I don't put up with stress. I don't tolerate stressful people. Um, I don't put up with loud, obnoxious people in my life at all. They're not welcome in my life. Uh, it's something people learn with me very quickly who know me personally. Because I have to maintain a low stress environment, I don't put up with stressful people. I don't put up with bullshit. I have a zero tolerance policy. That will go really, really far for you if you have Meniere's disease. Uh, also, de-stressing. Anything that can help you de-stress, find things that are therapeutic. Anything that will lower your overall cortisol levels, you know? I'm doing a craft here. This is relaxing for me. But weightlifting. Weightlifting is relaxing for me. Now, there's a caveat there. Weightlifting can also elevate cortisol if taken too far. Take your workloads too far, you train too hard too often. Uh, with Meniere's disease, you have a disease that makes you overproduce cortisol. Be aware of that. So again, regulating cortisol, meditation, relaxation, deep breathing exercises, removing additional stressors from your life that don't need to be there. Stressful people, negative people, they gotta go. And no matter how good of a friend they were to you, they have to understand you have a medical issue uh, that is exacerbated by stress. So if those people aren't willing to pay your bills for you or giving you $1,000 a month, if they're stressful to you, they gotta go. It's as simple as that. And uh, if you have this disease, you have to adopt that philosophy. It's just my opinion, something I found help. I don't care if they're family. I don't care if I've been friends with them for 15 years. They stress me out. They get the fuck out of my life. Zero tolerance. Works wonders. Uh, the other thing, of course, I found, uh, obviously, what else lowers cortisol levels? Uh, anabolics, testosterone. Not going to go into a lot of details on that, uh, but I noticed when I went on TRT, that was one of the best things I ever did for my Meniere's disease. Uh, and I did talk with the endocrinologist about it. We tried it because... Um, I had noticed that I didn't have some of the minor symptoms I used to get when I was younger in my 20s and I used anabolics. I didn't get some of the minor symptoms I had when I had it in just one ear. They went away. Uh, and we talked about it and I had low testosterone and high cortisol. Well, it turned out that my elevated cortisol levels from the Meniere's disease were negatively affecting my testosterone levels. There's an inverse relationship between androgens and cortisol sometimes. So once the testosterone was synthetically elevated, my cortisol levels went down tremendously. They cut down to a third of what they had been on my blood work. Easy solution. Uh, so honestly, that's what it comes down to. If you have Meniere's disease, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. Uh, you're going to have to figure out, number one, how to keep your ears dry internally. Uh, where you got to reduce that fluid retention in your ears. All right, that is critical. Diuretics and low sodium diets work for some people, not for others. Benadryl works for some people, not for others. Uh, a little bit of alcohol or wine before bed works for some people, not for others. I found the latter two work for me, the other doesn't. Um, I found Valium uh, does not work. Worst thing in the world I was ever prescribed for my Meniere's, but other people swear by it. 
And it could be the fact that, again, it de-stresses people, it relaxes you. Uh, for me, it just didn't work. It had all sorts of problems. Didn't like it. Um, so getting fluid retention in your ears under control is critical. And then stress management, getting your cortisol levels under control is critical. And you know, again, that's about removing extra stressors from your life, sometimes some chemical help, uh, whether it's Valium or anabolics or whatever uh, you can get away with, whatever your doctor will work with you on, um, you can try different things. And of course, de-stressing, finding activities that reduce stress that are therapeutic for you, that you enjoy doing, that relax you. And of course, removing stressful, annoying people from your life. Those people, if you have Meniere's disease, again, cannot stress that enough. If someone is stressful to you, I don't care if they're your child, they gotta get the fuck out of your life. You can't have room for it because uh, it will put you uh, pretty much in bed. It'll put you in bed five days out of the week otherwise. It's just not worth it. No relationship is worth that. No friendship, no family is worth that level of uh, physical problems. And if people can't understand that uh, and you have this disease, they can't be in your life because they will destroy your inner ears further um, and they will make you dizzy and make you throw up all the time. Uh, again, I don't think any relationship is worth that. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I really hope anyone who's got a loved one who suffers from this or who's uh, been diagnosed with this disease finds this helpful. This is the best that I can do for you for advice on it over my many years of dealing with it. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.